Okay, hi everyone. So today we're going to go over how we can animate maps. Uh, and in particular, we're going to use an example of how we might be able to animate a species distribution map using an example that we can download under Creative Commons license from online. So the species that we're going to use today is Pinus sylvestris or Scots pine, which is a widely distributed um, conifer species across much of Europe. And so I'm just going to type into Google Pinus sylvestris distribution map and SVG because really what this tutorial is going to focus on is how we can use SVG files in Illustrator, prepare them and then import them into After Effects for animation. I'll try to do a separate video on how we might be able to sort of come up with a workflow for how we can use images that are maybe PNG or JPEGs of particular species distributions at a later date. But this is going to focus on using SVG files where available. So we're just going to click on the first link here and I'll put the link in the description below. And this is the distribution of Scots pine across much of Europe in the light green here. And we're just going to click open in media viewer and then on the right hand side we're going to click the download button and we're going to download the original file and note that it says SVG here. And we want to make sure we download the SVG file. So we're just going to save that. And I've already saved that just here. Then we're going to move across to Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to create a new item. I'm going to set mine as a custom 1920 by 1080. You can set it to whatever you want. And then we're going to navigate to where we saved that SVG file. And we're just going to drag it and drop it into Illustrator and click OK on any warning messages that come up. So this is what we're faced with when we import it into Illustrator. And at the moment, you'll notice on the Layers panel on the right hand side here, if you can't see the Layers panel, just come up to Window and select Layers and it should appear. We'll notice that it's sort of nested all within a single layer. So all of the different layers themselves are nested within a single layer at the moment. And the gist of what we're going to want to do here is just effectively separate these all out and store the individual components that we want to animate individually as their own layer, save this as an Illustrator file, and then we'll import that into After Effects and that will allow us, us to animate the individual layers in After Effects. So the way we're going to go about doing this is just over in the layer panel, see the little eye symbol just here. We can toggle this eye symbol on or off and see the elements disappear or change in the main viewer pane. And just by toggling these on or off, we're going to work out what are effectively redundancies and what are effectively layers that we want to retain. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a couple of new layers just up here, just to create sort of empty pots for us to store the elements that we want to create new layers into and call them something useful. So there's a Scots pine layer. I'm going to do another second layer because there's a second distribution here. So we want to store those in separate layers. So if we toggle this layer on or off, we see those beige X's appear and disappear. And if we toggle this one off, we see the green X's appear and disappear. I'm just going to turn those both off for now because we're not going to be interested in those in this tutorial, but you could quite easily add them to an individual layer and animate them in After Effects also. Just by toggling this layer off here, we can see this is the main Scots Pine distribution layer in green that we can toggle on or off. So we're going to want to grab that, click it, select it, drag it, and move it up and drag it into our new Scots Pine layer. Now you'll notice that the distribution sort of appears to change in the main viewer panel. And that's just because we've placed it in the drawing order above some of the other layers that are currently in here. And so we're going to rearrange that at a later date. Don't worry about the fact that it might have appeared to have changed. We've just changed its position in the drawing order. Similarly, this is the second distribution of Scott's pine layer. This is the naturalized layer. So we're going to want to store that in our second Scott's pine layer that we just produced there. So we'll just click that, drag that up and place that in there. And again, you'll see the same sort of thing happen. Don't worry, it's just changed position in the drawing order. So by toggling things on or off, we might see that there are actually some things that don't actually change at all. And we might decide that those things aren't actually relevant and we want to just get rid of them to simplify it. So once we've highlighted a particular layer that we've identified we want to get rid of, we can just make sure it's selected, come up to these three dashes up here, and then just click Delete Other, and that will disappear. And so I'm just going to go through this process now, creating new layers and dragging items into those new layers that we want to keep, so that each item that we want to keep is in its own individual layer, and deleting the other bits that aren't going to be relevant for the animation, or that we don't want to drag in and animate in After Effects. So now that we've dragged the elements that we want to retain into their own individual layers, and that will be the key when we save this Illustrator file to be able to animate them individually in After Effects, we can rearrange them in this Layers panel so that the drawing order appears how we want them to be reflected in After Effects. So for example, we'll want the lakes to be on top of the Scots Pine layer so that they're visible, we see them appear down here. We'll also want the countries layer to be above the Scots Pine layer so that the individual country boundaries appear on top of the Scots Pine layer. And across the wider map of Europe, we'll want the Scots Pine layer to be below the sea layer so that it actually appears and is clipped out and masked by the sea layer. And then we can go ahead and just delete anything else that appears to be redundant in here. 
So what we're left with now is a selection of layers all containing something individual that we might want to animate. And we can turn them all on and off and just see what they contain. Don't worry too much about the drawing order. You can always change this later in After Effects. The key is to have them all in their own individual layers. So we're gonna come up, we're gonna go File, Save As, and we're just gonna save this as an Illustrator file from this drop down menu here. Click Save, click OK. Then we're gonna navigate across to our After Effects. We're just gonna create a new project and a new composition with a 1920 by 1080. You can see the composition settings that I've set up for this here with a frame rate of 25. It's 21 seconds with a black background for now, which is fine. And we're just gonna to navigate to where we saved our Illustrator file and just drag and drop that into our project. This little dialog box will open up. We wanna make sure it's selected to footage, merge layers, and just click OK. Then we can drag and drop this down in our composition pane and we'll see it appears just there. So if we just quickly come up to layer, new, solid, and create a new solid layer, we can select whatever you like here, but I'm gonna choose a hex color code of 222222, which is a sort of slate gray color, and click OK. That creates a solid, and we'll just drag that underneath our Illustrator layer in our composition pane. Now on our Illustrator layer in our composition pane, if we just right click, come down to create, and then click the convert to layer comp, that will turn this Illustrator layer into a composition, which means that we can now double click on it and see all of our own individual layers within it. So now that we've got these own individual layers from our one Illustrator layer that we imported originally, this means that we can turn them on or off or animate them individually. If, for example, we wanted the C color to not be C color at all, but we wanted it to blend in nicely with the background so that the map just pops out from our background color, we can select our CEU, right click on it, click create, and then create shapes from vector layer. And this will create a shape layer from our CEU layer. Now we can delete the CEU layer because we don't need that anymore, or you can retain it if you like. But if we click on the CEU layer, we'll notice that the fill options and the stroke options appear, which aren't present if we select the Illustrator layer. So now if we select the fill color, we select the eyedropper tool, we can either click the background color in order for it to change to the same background color, or we can select our hex color codes and enter the same color code in there. We'll see that our map now sits perfectly on the background color of the solid that we selected. So that's the basics of taking an existing SVG file of a species distribution map, for example, that's available online, bringing it into Illustrator, organizing the layers so that we can then split them out in After Effects and importing it into After Effects, and then maybe changing some of those layers into shape layers so that we can alter the colors to whatever we desire in After Effects. It's very simple from this point to then add some basic animation, for example, changing the position or the opacity or the rotation of different objects. So if, for example, we wanted to add some animation to our Scott's Pine distribution layer, we could hit the shortcut keys P to change the position with our layer selected, T on the shortcut keys to change the opacity of this layer, and then just set keyframes over time so that we can create an animation. We could do that quickly now. Let's just hit the position shortcut keys. We'll lay down our first keyframe. And I'm just gonna move this on by plus 25 seconds and then lay down another keyframe. Then move the time slider back to our first keyframe, select that first key keyframe, and then change the position option so that it starts off the screen. And if we hit spacebar, we see that that means it moves onto screen in the first second. Then for example, if we wanted it to flash in the next couple of seconds to sort of really grab the observer's attention, we could move it to the end of that position keyframe is on the time slider, which is at one second. Make sure our layer is select selected hit the T for the shortcut key for our opacity settings, hit the first one down at 100% there, and then I'm just gonna to add to 12 frames and then add another opacity keyframe, take that down to zero, then add another 12 frames, then take that back up to 100, then add another 12 frames, you get the idea, take it down to zero, and then add another 12 frames and take that up to 100. It's gonna highlight all of these keyframes and change them to easy ease, and then bring our time slider back to the beginning. We'll see that now we have the distribution map appear in the first second and then flash in the next couple of seconds just by changing the position and the transparency settings. So that's a very sort of quick introduction to how we can take those um, SVG files, prepare them in Illustrator, bring them into After Effects, and then just start playing around with the different sort of animation options that you might be able to sort of add to your SVG file and your different layers to animate your maps. So I hope that was useful. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out all the other videos for tutorials and tips.